Hello my dear listeners, hello my dear friends, how are you all? I hope you are doing your best with utmost honesty and love to serve your duties. So, let's start the next part of the story, The Four Swindlers. This story is taken from Bengal Fairy Tales, written by Francis Bradley Bradley Bart and it was published in the year 1920 and uh, it was illustrated by Obonindranath Thakur. So, let's start the story. So, today we are going to dig into the, the fact what happened to the Kotal. Evening drew near and nature was quickly clothed in her sable garb. The Kotal's son, who was to play his part, dressed himself as the princess of the kingdom, imitated her voice and manners, taking his friends with him disguised as her attendants and carrying with him all the things required for worship. The plan adopted was that the Kotal's son, the chief actor that night, should in his female dress impersonate the princess and his companions her followers. All four bent their steps towards the temple of Kali near the palace. Their female attire afforded them security and no policeman dared challenge them. But when they arrived at the spot where the Kotal of the kingdom was personally superintending his forces, he, filled with suspicion, laid his hand on the shoulder of him who played the part of the princess. The latter at once assumed the dignity and tone of an affronted lady and threatened to report the Kotal's insolence to the king. The officer, under the impression that the person speaking was no other than the princess herself, fell on his knees and begged for pardon, which was granted on condition that he would amuse them by showing them how criminals were put in the stocks. The Kotal, hastening to comply with their request, led them into the jail, and having none undergoing the punishment at the time, took off his coat, laid himself flat on his back, and asked one of them to put him into the stocks. It was no sooner done than the hero of the night dressed himself in the uniform of the man at his mercy went to his wife and so cleverly impersonated her husband that he induced her to make over every valuable gem and jewel she possessed to be kept securely by him until the morning. Then the young men, with their precious spoil, hurriedly left the palace for their own house. The next morning, the Kotal was missing, and the whole court and the members of his family, who were full of anxiety, looked for him everywhere without success. At length, an inferior police officer happened by chance to enter the jail, and great was his consternation on finding the Kotal stretched at full length on the ground with the stocks on his feet. Being instantly liberated, the prefect of police saw his wife, who with tears related how the most precious things in the house had been taken away. The man was pierced to the heart to realize that he was now reduced to poverty and hastened to the court with the report of the outrage done to him. Some pitied him, others less favorably disposed laughed in their sleeves at his expense. A little later, the pretender to astrological knowledge made his appearance as usual and announced that the king himself would be the next victim. So, my dear friends, today I am going to stop here. Be happy, be jolly, be safe. Shubhamastu.